Those cases date back to 1982 and they run into the late 1990s. Now, the Commonwealth's Attorney's Office is recommending that he spend 20 years behind bars for all of these charges. Now, yesterday, this all got underway during a confidential mediation hearing between both sides of the attorneys. They were trying to reach a deal yesterday. They weren't able to, and as of today, they were able to come to a resolution in this case. Now, Dishon was in court today wearing all orange, his arms in handcuffs, and Jessica Dishon's mother was in court as well as other relatives, all of them visibly emotional. None of them wanted to talk with the media, but I did talk with the prosecutor on this case who's been dealing with this case since day one, and he shed some light on his own. Today's a very sad day uh, because Stanley Dishon in court uh, made admission that he took the life of Jessica. She was 17 year old, didn't need to die that way. Now, Stanley Dishon will be back in court in Foley County on March 26th for his official sentencing. Reporting live in Nelson County, I'm Erica Coghill, WLKY News. From across the country, condolences are coming in tonight for Wendell Ford. The former Kentucky governor and U.S. senator died today at the age of 90. WLKY Steve Bergen covered him over the years, and he joins us now to look back at Ford's life and legacy. Those who knew Wendell Ford best say he was a tireless fighter for Kentucky. And while he referred to himself as a good old country boy, he was a master in the political arena. Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, and my fellow Americans, Wendell Ford served four six-year terms in the U.S. Senate. He rose to become Majority Whip. Before heading to Washington, Ford was Lieutenant Governor and then Governor, credited with consolidating state government and making it more efficient. It was such an amazing guy to come into my life as it happened. Former Congressman and fellow Democrat Ron Mazzoli of Louisville hooked up with Ford in Frankfurt and then later in Washington, D.C. He said Ford never took his foot off the gas. I think Wendell lived it out, and I think that really is his legacy politically, is that you, you just got to keep doing something for people. You can't just sit back on your oar, and, and you got to keep rowing it. The best way for me to continue serving the people of Kentucky is to remain in the United States Senate. In 1982, Ford decided to forego another run at governor, instead staying in Washington. Mazzoli was at Ford's side when he made that decision. Today on the Senate floor, the Owensboro native was recognized by Republican Mitch McConnell. Many have now heard the sad news that one of the giants of Kentucky politics passed away last night. As for his legacy on Capitol Hill, he probably was not going to be or he's not going to be remembered for something lofty and global and worldwide. I think he's going to be known for being a down-home guy who never forgot his roots. Last summer, Ford disclosed he was battling lung cancer. Mm -hmm. You will build this for sure, Steve. Well, Ford's career was so expansive, he touched many lives. Mark Vanderhoff spoke to some state leaders who worked with them. Mark, how were they reacting to the news? Well, they say this is sad news. They say Ford was the kind of person who made an impression on you the moment you met him. The first thing that struck me is that that's the passing of an icon. State Senator Gerald Neal of Louisville was a civil rights activist when he first met Wendell Ford in the 1960s. He and others say Ford treated all people with respect. Former Governor Julian Carroll served as Ford's lieutenant governor from 1971 to 1974. He first met Ford in 1963 working on a PowerPoint.